Hi everyone, my name is Fang Gu. I'm from the product management team from uh, VeloCloud by VMware. So today, in the next 10 minutes, we will talk about segmentation on the VeloCloud SD1 solution. So before we jump into the demo, let's just quickly go over three use cases we want to bring up to you for the enterprise world as well as service provider world that we have seen in the field. First, and uh, in the enterprise world segmentation. What you are seeing here is a topology that's typically seen in the enterprise uh, industry, in the retail industry world, where you have branch offices and retail stores distributed across the country or globe. And you also have data center, which is centralized somewhere uh, to carry the different applications, or it can be regional hub to be used as a transit point for all the traffic. Different segments will be cre created or desired for different reasons, line of business or separation of services like voice service you want to separate out, as well as security requirement like PCI. You want to separate the PCI segment from the rest of the network. So with the value cloud segmentation, we are not only doing the segment uh, segmentation, which is virtually segmenting, uh, isolating all the different networks, but also, more importantly, we are bringing more uh, all the rich uh, features of the, uh, of the SD1 to the segment base. Here, what we mean, first, segment-aware topology insertion. Why do we need that? For example, quick, uh, a good example is voice service. You want to, call, you want to enable the, the dynamic edge-to-edge -edge between the branches when the branch A is calling branch B. You want that media traffic to go from branch A to branch B directly. You don't want them to backhaul. Versus other traffic in corporate, like you want, just want to send them from branch to hub directly. So that is different topologies. One is uh, full, full mesh or dynamic branch to branch enabled. The other is no dynamic branch to branch enabled. We will show you uh, exactly what I mean uh, later on in the demo on the UI so it's clearer. So the next, segment aware policies. Different segments may have different requirements. When, uh, you want to enable some services for some segment, but you want to disable some services for some other segments. Or it can be uh, you want to enable the different priorities for different applications in different segments. So here, well, we will show you in a later, again, the, a demo that in the guest service, you want to enable the firewall. And in the, uh, in the PCI segment, you want to disable this firewall, which can be easily done from the UI. And also, we, are, uh, we, are, uh, believe, we believe that this is one of the key important differentiator we have from other, service provider, uh, from other SD1 providers, which you have to configure a global security policies for all the different segments. So we are bringing that to the segment aware level. And the next is the, uh, how do we map to the NSS routing domain here? So assume that in a data center, you have different line of business. You isolate different applications based on the different business lines for, the for different departments, and you put them into different NSX routing domain. And from SD1, uh, Velcro SD1 solution perspective, we can map that seg our segmentation to those routing domains. So here we can maintain the segmentation or network isolation end to end from the data center all the way to the branch. And on the branch side, um, you map those segments to VLAN IDs. Is there any other? Yeah. On the LAN side, it's like VRF light, right? Uh, you configure, you have different interfaces. You just assign a segment to the interface. Then it will be isolated. Let's move along with two more use cases. How do we use the segmentation that ties to the multi-tenancy requirements? First, service provider world where we have the common use to triple play voice, uh, voice internet and data. The service providers, uh, they, they provide different services for different customers, and natively, as Velo Cloud Solution, we already multi-tenant. So we separate different customers, and with the segmentation feature, we are bringing it to another level. So we're pro providing multiple tier of segmentations, which is loved by all our service provider customers. Bring one further down to each enterprise customer. So enterprise could also require this multi-tenancy. Here we, we, we can see a quick example. For example, I am the, or you are the um, uh, airport application provider. You host different applications for different uh, airlines. 
So in one, in each of the uh, airports, you just want to drop one box, which you can sub sell or resell those SD1 or different services as a bundle to the different airlines, United, for example. And you want to, what does the United IT want? They want to jump onto the portal to configure their own segmentation configurations within, within the segment. They want to enable different services. And they, are, they want to make uh, the policy change for each different segments. So that's a segment uh, per segment, the QoS. And then you, can, you also want to just cap on the different segments. So the, so the subtenants like United will only use the bandwidth they are buying from you. So these use cases we brought up, we have seen a lot. What we really want to tell is with our segmentation, you have a scalable uh, configurations from the UI, just one single pane of glass of configuration, and it's, uh, it's pushing out to all the edges. You don't have to configure box by box. box. And also we are bringing the services like the yes, topology insertion, different policies, and a different security insertion into the segment level. So where's the edge here? Is it an appliance? Is it a, v a VM? Are you actually talking about putting this into the NSX agent? Or in the previous use case? This one. Uh -huh. So at some point, the, the traffic recognition and then segmentation has to occur. That would normally be a device. Or aka router or something similar you can do it on vnfs as well so in the yeah. previous use case that we had shown actually yeah uh, on the hub side we use a uh, virtual on the data center side we were using physical yes but it's equally interchangeable like people use mm -hmm. uh, like uh, with a large sp who is using our vnfs on the branch mm -hmm. you can have segment segmentation support on the branch side vnfs as well so what about when we get to now this is peering into the future in the data center when we have containers what we really want is this agent to be in the nsx agent in the v-switch hmm. because so i've be got a container i need to attach it to this segment but the container is ephemeral mm -hmm. right and i might have you know over here air france they might have 50 containers in the front end mm -hmm. might scale up or scale down depending on the load coming in but i actually want to send that segment all the way into my data center so that i actually have end-to-end -end isolation yeah we do that so yeah. in the previous use case that's what we have shown right that we send the segment ids from the branch where, where there is no NSX running. Yeah. And this is consider this as your airlines. Right. And we'll send oh, those segment saying, IDs yeah. all the way there. And those routing domains would be the NSX routing domains where these airlines can maintain their own container. Yeah, but, you're, but the VeloCloud functionality is not in the NSX agent. <coughs> Correct. It, it's just map. You mapping the VeloCloud exactly. edge to the NSX routing segments or yes. overlays. Yes. And then using the micro segmentation in the data center. Within that routing right. domain, you can have micro segmentation. Right. Well, the logical yeah. extension is to use NSX as a VeloCloud. That's all futures. Yeah. We re <laughs> that's where. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. So that's we are working on a bunch of these integration. We could. We would love to get your feedback on that, with yeah. especially with this whole acquisition now. Just someone came up on Slack and was asking a question. Now, let me jump on the demo quickly to show. So what you are seeing here, again, coming back to the VCO, I jump in as enterprise, a global retail labs. Um, and then first, let's come to the segment tab. We will see where our segments are defined. And again, this is only defined once and it will be available to all the profiles and edges. So here we have guest PCI and voice segment. And on the profile, let me show you the segment aware topology insertion. So I jump into the branch profile and enter the device. The UI is a little nervous as me now. So our configurations are all segment aware. What we hear, uh, what we mean is when we, can, we click on the... Oh, it's not reactive. Okay, okay. So I click on a drop-down box, you will see different segments list that's assigned to this profile. And when I go to the voice profile, you see I enable the dynamic edge-to-edge -edge VPN. But on other profiles, I don't want to enable that. For example, the PCI segment, I only want everything to backhaul to the hub, and that's it, stop there. So that's the, just with a couple of clicks, 
then we are enable this uh, different segment uh, with a different segment, different topologies instead of numbers of command lines in the in the UI in the traditional way. So next, let me just uh, uh, show the segment aware policies to make it a little bit more interesting. Assume that I'm a guest who go to the Starbucks and I have my client over here and I want to serve um, different places, especially for the Facebook. And I'm not able to get into, but I'm still able to go to maybe Amazon. Yeah, it works. So now I complain to the um, admin that why I'm not able to serve the, uh, serve the uh, uh, Facebook and then come back to the edge level. Let's look at the edge configurations. So this is the, I know this is a Chicago branch. And I look at my device setting because I know this client is behind the interface gig one. I go to the interface part, interface configurations. Okay, my gig one is configured on the PCI segment. Okay, now let me quickly change it to the right segment. Browser. Connection. Sorry about the glitches. Okay, now I save the changes. Confirm. It will take 30 seconds for the configuration to get changed when the uh, on the next heartbeat between the edge and the orchestrator. But let me go to the client. And Just a real quick question: What would happen to an already established uh, session when you change the policy? Will it be dropped or will it stay online? So a policy changes basically take effect on new flows only. So okay. if there is an existing flow that will continue to work with the existing policy. Okay, wonderful. Okay. I changed the network to the correct guest segment. Now I'm able to serve the Facebook. Okay, now I'm happy. Uh, what happened behind the scene? <laughs> so on the firewall, under the firewall tabs, different profiles have different policy configurations. So over here, let me quickly show in the drop down. Okay, so the PCI over here is denying the Facebook by default. And on the, on the guest segment by default, it's allowing all. So there's no such rule to um, configure. It's everything is, uh, uh, is allowed there. Sorry, I have another question regarding this. What are your firewall capabilities here? Yeah, I, I've seen you just uh, denied your Facebook, yeah? Um, yeah, what do you have? Is a stateful inspection, URL based, or what can you do here? Yeah, so we have a firewall that is built in. It's uh, uh, an application-aware stateful firewall. Um, so it leverages our deep application recognition engine uh, so that you can select uh, applications that you want to block or allow on the network. So actually, with what you mentioned before with Skype, uh, I don't know, you can um, see file transfers or what? That is all also possible on the firewall right, layer, yeah, so yes. I can say Absolutely. the people can do a Skype call, but yeah, no yeah. file transfer. So the same application recognition engine is available both in the business policy side of the house as well as the firewall. Right. That was a good question. 
All right. Um, yeah, that's basically the policy. Um, you can define the app source and destination and uh, deny or allow.